Hello, I'm Catherine Nicholson. You're watching Talking Europe on France 24. This week, I'm speaking to European Commission Vice President Margarita Skinas, a former MEP for Greece and Commission spokesperson. He's now in charge of coordinating work on issues that are never far from the headlines, including migration and security in the European Union. Uh, Mr. Skinas, thanks very much for being our guest today. I'd like to jump straight in uh, with an issue that's very much continuing to dominate the headlines, racial discrimination, uh, after we had the, the funeral in the US this week of, of George Floyd. Uh, very much a debate here in Europe as well. Just looking at representation in the European Union itself, there has actually never been a black European commissioner, it's been pointed out, and less than 5% of the European Parliament's members are from ethnic minorities. That doesn't reflect uh, the proportions of the, the population in Europe, of course. Would you agree that there is a representation problem in Europe's institutions? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me start by saying that uh, what we call the European way of life uh, refers to uh, what makes Europe a unique place, which is the diversity, our cultural diversity, the, the richness of our um, um, social realities and the fact that we have a, a strong tradition of protecting minorities, of having universal systems for healthcare and social protection. So in a way, we have a more cohesive model of society and, and a diverse one. Uh, the, the European way of life, it's not a homo europeus. There is not a prevailing model, but there is rather a mirror of, of, our, of our diversity and cultural richness. Having said that, I do agree that in certain areas, uh, like the ones that you mentioned, especially uh, in the institutions where we have this uh, uh, competition-based system for recruiting officials, of course, uh, uh, there is not always uh, easy to attract the same level of, uh, of uh, richness uh, from society. This is something that we are well aware of. Uh, mm. You are also right that there was never a commissioner of color in the college. And I really hope that we'll find a ways to continue fighting to promoting more actively uh, uh, social diversity and cultural richness. OK, let's move on to uh, a really key, central and much uh, spoken about part of your work, migration. Um, last November, you spoke to one of my colleagues here at France 24 and you told us that the new EU migration pact has to be on the table before the EU summit of March 25th, 26th this year. Now, of course, we know now that that summit was completely overtaken by the coronavirus pandemic. Um, there's another EU summit coming up on June 19th. Uh, will the proposals for the new migration pact be on the agenda? And when do you expect this pact to actually uh, start uh, being approved? Well, as you rightly point out, uh, this is a, a new world that has emerged uh, since November. It is <clears throat> perfectly uh, logical that the Commission had to readjust its, its focus uh, on the uh, uh, pandemic-related work. And uh, during the confinement uh, uh, months in organizing our member states' response to that, mm. but also um, doing everything is necessary with our recovery initiative to kickstart the real economy mm. again. So our focus uh, had to be uh, shifted to the pandemic-related uh, initiatives. But now that this work is, is coming to an end and at the start of the German presidency, I think this is now the time uh, to um, um, revisit uh, the EU Pact for Migration and Asylum, which, as you know, is one of the most emblematic proposals of the von der Leyen Commission, one of the uh, five, six uh, key uh, initiatives on which we obtained the vote of confidence of Parliament and the support of the European Council. And I think that now we are reaching this uh, time where uh, mm. these proposals will be presented so the work can uh, start in earnest with the German presidency of the Council. Now let's talk about the, the potential content of the pact then. Uh, one of the really big contentious issues over the last five years or so has been a, a proposal the Commission made in 2016 for uh, an automated system for relocating uh, asylum seekers, uh, people given formal status as asylum seekers around the EU. Will this be part of the new proposal? We have said repeatedly, uh, President von der Leyen, uh, Commissioner Johansson and myself, that uh, uh, the pact would have to address uh, the three 
fundamental dimensions that could constitute a comprehensive, holistic EU policy framework for migration and asylum. First, uh, a very strong external dimension, uh, building up uh, relations of trust between the European Union and the countries of origin and transit, so that we can create more opportunities for the people at the root of the mm -hmm. migratory flows. Secondly, we have to build uh, a new robust uh, system for managing our external borders with a reinforced uh, Frontex, the European Border and Coast Guard, which is now, as you know, in the process of uh, um, setting up a permanent standing corp of 10,000 border and coast guards. And thirdly, a system of uh, solidarity, mm. which I would like to call a system of permanent mm -mm. and effective solidarity that would allow all our member states to share the burdens of managing uh, asylum and migration flows on an equal basis, because mm. what we're having now is not fair uh, to have only the countries of first entry assume a disproportionate uh, uh, Mm. burden for on behalf of the rest. Well, These are the three elements that we need to address with the pact. Well, absolutely. We, we've had a lot of talk about solidarity in terms of migration uh, since uh, the 2015 peak and before. <coughs> but when you have governments of member states uh, that are stridently anti-migration, such as Hungary, Poland and the Czech Republic, which are, have all been found to have broken EU law by refusing for several years to relocate migrants, is it really possible to find uh, a win-win situation, uh, which you, you mentioned the last time we spoke to you. I, I just said that this is not going to be easy. <laughs> I'm, I'm well aware that this is going to be a, a complex and, and difficult negotiation. But I'm equally convinced that um, Europe cannot uh, allow to fail twice on such an important thing. We have the biggest and best regulated market in the world. We have the second biggest common currency in the world. It's unthinkable not to have a, a, a comprehensive framework for EU migration policy. And uh, our member states, of course, they had their differences back in 2016. We have consulted extensively since, and we, we hope that our member states will not simply reproduce the red lines of 2016, but we, they will all make an effort uh, so that we can craft this compromise that Europe uh, needs so badly. All right, looking at uh, one other issue uh, relating to migrants, specifically in your home country of Greece, uh, there's been a, a lot of focus, of course, on the fact that Greece is, is uh, uh, housing currently many thousands of migrants. There's one particular issue that's been raised uh, by Human Rights Watch, among others, about children uh, being held in detention in Greece, in a situation that violates both Greek law and international law. Now, Human Rights Watch wrote to the Greek Prime Minister uh, back in mid-May to ask that uh, more than 200 children be moved uh, from detention. Uh, they haven't had a response. This is on European soil. Uh, is this detention of children acceptable to you? <coughs> First of all, what is happening in Greece and in other countries of first entry is precisely the result of the current uh, patchwork of legislative solutions, ad hoc solutions that we have, and it's precisely the result of the lack of the comprehensive, holistic approach that we badly uh, need. So uh, I think this is always important to remember, because we should not act like uh, we are observers of a situation. We should know what are the root causes of the situation that we find ourselves in. Then on, on uh, minors, clearly um, uh, minors uh, in uh, the centres need to be protected. Uh, there are rules for that, they are all given a tutor, they are under uh, protection and uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure that uh, all these rules would have to be enforced uh, in all member states. Uh, this is how it works. Uh, uh, sometimes there is also confusion about terminology. I'm not sure that detention and protection uh, amount to the same thing, but um, no minor should be left unattended, unaccompanied and without a adequate support from a tutor and access to the procedures that they need. So uh, would you say that this is an issue specifically regarding these children in Greece that should be looked at more closely? 
I just said what I, what I think. There are rules, and rules pertain to the fact that all minors in the centers need to be uh, protected. They need to be uh, given access to the procedures. They need to be given a tutor that would allow uh, uh, procedures to continue. And I should also not forget that we have a major uh, program for uh, relocating unaccompanied minors. Mm. from Greece uh, that is currently in full deployment uh, thanks to the solidarity of many of our member states. Okay, just on uh, one final issue, uh, as this migration pact is, uh, of course, being uh, rewritten and finalised, the International Rescue Committee has also weighed in. It's calling for the European Union uh, to relaunch its own search and rescue missions in the Mediterranean, ending reliance on, on third country coast guards such as Libya, which has been very problematic over the last couple of years. Uh, is that something you'd be prepared to do? Well, I think we should all be collectively patient and wait for the pact to be presented in, in its final form. I do not want now in, in, in a TV interview to advance the content of a pact that has not been uh, agreed or decided by the College of Commissioners yet. What I do know is that we, as we are now reaching the, the final stage, we are receiving uh, very uh, interesting uh, contributions from mm -hmm. member states, uh, stakeholders, partners, and all this uh, will be duly taken on board and I can say that of course search and rescue uh, will have to be covered uh, by the new EU pact. These mm. search and rescue operations are an integral part of the new system that we will want to bring about. All right Margaritas Skinas we're out of time but thank you very much for being our guest today on Talking Europe. Thank you very much for being our guest today on Talking Europe. Thank you. And thanks very much to you our viewers for watching. Do stay with us uh, part two of the programme coming up in a couple of minutes time.